Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to work with you guys on creating a sports franchise styled uh, logo or emblem mascot um, piece of artwork. Um, this basically consists of like three to two colors. You keep them monochromatic so they're all basically the same hue. Um, and you know, you start off essentially with this style with some really bold contour lines and then your details on the inside are, you know, smaller stroke weight. Um, lines and then you basically apply a shadow tone and a highlight tone. So let's go ahead and get started. So basically what I'm going to go in, um, I have this layer here I sketched out for the tiger head that I want to do. So with this layer I'm going to hop over to the layer panel and head down to um, template. And this is basically going to knock, it's going to mute the uh, opacity of this layer and lock it so I uh, can't mess with it. So I'm going to create a new layer on top of that to get started. So now what I want to do is I'm basically going to pick the tones that I want to work with and I'm going to go with blues today so I'm going to double click here to get started. I'm going to head over to the blue hues and I'm going to pick my darkest tone which I'm going to go for like a dark navy blue. I'm going to hit OK. So now that I have that I'm going to go head over to the swatches panel. I'm going to hit a new swatch and then I'm going to set this to global so that at any point if I don't like this color and change it it'll apply it to the artwork that has that uh, color applied to it. So I'm going to hit OK. Uh, then I'm going to select the second tone. So this one I'm going to go um, obviously brighter and at the same time I'm going to remove some of the saturation. Um, and you do that by moving left. So when you desaturate this color you're heading to grays when you desaturate. Um, when you head to the right you're saturating more of that color. So I'm going to desaturate um, and I think I'll go about right there. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and add a new um, color swatch, set it to global, hit OK, and then I'm going to pick my final color. So I'm going to head back over here, double click here, and then I'm going to head up. I'm going to go for something a little brighter. And this I'm actually going to sh shift the hue just a little bit. I'm going to keep it within the same range, which are blues, um, but I'm going to shift it a little, little brighter. Uh, a little warm is like we, we like to call it. Um, I, I like to judge all my colors, whether it's warm or cold. Obviously, you're your blues and your, your violets can be cold and then when you get into the reds, oranges, and yellows those are warmer colors. So I'm going to hit OK. Go ahead and apply this as a swatch. Hit it to global. Hit OK. Alright, so I'm going to be working with my outline. So I'm going to use this for my outlines. I want dark outlines. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So basically I'm going to show you a couple techniques in here just using overlaps. But you want to keep consistent for the most part. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start um, in the back and if you're looking at this and imagining this this head in 3D space his snout is going to be in front of the, the, the back side of his head so with that in mind let's go ahead and just start moving along um, I might fast forward I'm recording this live as I'm, I'm working with it so um, you know if it happens later in the video that I fast forward you'll know why because it gets a little tedious but uh, basically um, this style you want to keep the node count pretty low. Um, you want to kind of simplify some of the, uh, the shapes that you're using. Now, you'll also notice that I have it, uh, the color applied to fill, and you can see from the first node to the current, it's going to draw a straight line to that uh, because it's filling the space. I don't want that. It's kind of in my way. So I'm going to hold Shift and hit X, and that's a shortcut to swap these. Or you can hit this little... Um, uh, icon here and it will do the uh, swap for you. So let's continue on. So I'm going to zoom in here and just keep going. So right here, I'm done with this line. That's kind of basically, so I trace that back side of the head and now this is where I'm going to decide on how thick I want all my overall contours to be. So I'm going to keep knocking this up until it feels right to me. Now we have a lot of options in the stroke panel. Um, you know, we can, we can uh, curve the edges, but I want to keep it sharp, so I'm going to keep these sharp here. I'm, I'm pretty okay with this weight, but I want to make some, some changes. So with that in mind, I'm going to hold control and then just click away from that, and then I'm actually going to click it again. And now I'm basically just going to hop in here and kind of shift some of these out. I don't like the, this tiny little gap there. Now I have a nice wide one, so I'm going to basically do the same thing here. I'm going to click the node and extend that gap a little bit. That feels a little better to me. So, that's good. I think I'm okay with that for now. We can always change it, but uh, I'm going to move on now. So now here, I'm going to start on this ear. This, is, this ear is in front of 
uh, this back um, side of his head. So there's going to be some overlap in here, and I'll show you how I'll take care of that. So I'm going to go ahead and trace out his, uh, his ear here. And I'm okay with the curve. I just got to keep it pretty simple. Don't want to have a whole bunch of uh, anchor points. I'm going to close this one here. And you can see I have a, it's almost like a straight line here. I'm going to ignore that. Remember, your sketch is just, it's, you know, it's to help you uh, move along. Um, you know, it's not uh, set in stone. You can make changes on the fly. So I'm going to go ahead and close this here. Now, uh, what you see here is you have that back line. It's going in here. It doesn't look right. So the, the quick and easy way to do, uh, take care of that is I'm just going to put a white fill because my paper's white. So this might mess me up later, but I'll show you how we, uh, we can take care of that. So I'm going to go ahead and add a white fill to that section, and you'll see it takes care of that overlap for me. So we can do that route, or you can go this route. You can actually take care of that small piece by creating a shape. And then I don't want to have that stroke, so I'm going to go ahead and hold Shift and hit X to swap it. And then hit go to white. Now here's a cool trick. Um, now you can see this one's overlapping this line. That's not what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this object. I'm going to hit Control X to cut, or you can head up to Edit and cut. It's not available now because I haven't selected anything. I'm going to select this shape, and in the stacking order, and this is really important, you'll see the way these layers are stacking, it's below the ear, which is exactly how we want it. But with this um, object selected, I can now hit Control F, which is um, Edit Paste in Front. You can see Control F here. I'm going to paste in front of this selected object. And when I paste in front of this one, it won't go in front of this one because it's ahead of it. So that's a great little trick to kind of um, on the fly and quickly organize your stacking order of objects. So, you know what, I'll continue with this, um, this look here, just adding those shapes. Uh, and then basically move on. So I'm actually going to, um, I closed this earlier. Um, and I want to keep this live. I want you guys to kind of see how I go through my day-to-day -day creating pieces like this. And, and I mess up. And everybody messes up. So I, I, want to, I, want, I want you guys to see the problem solving. So I'm going to continue on. So I click that node because I want to continue on. And I'm, I'm going to create this shape here. So I'm going to zoom out. And I'm just going to make this overall shape here. I'm going to close this one and head back in here because I'm going to... Um, Make this curve here, and then head to the chin here, and make that shape there. So uh, I actually went a little short here. I stopped where I, in my mind, I was going to create the chin, but I want to do the overlap again. And you should do this. You should overshoot your lines a little bit because it helps the flow of the piece. Um, well, not of the piece, but that actual line, the gesture line. You don't want to disrupt that uh, rhythm to the line. Okay, so that's good there. Um, so I can do the chin now. I can hop in, swing this chin out. I'm going to close that node, head over here, and I'll show you another trick. I'm going to keep this one really sharp. Close that node, and then head in right there, and that's good to me. So now this is a little too sharp for my tastes. You know, I want maybe I want this to be a little curved. So what I can do is if I hold Control, that'll it's a shortcut to get right to the direct selection versus the move. I mean, this is the selection, this is direct selection, so you can you know work with uh, anchor points. When you hold control, when you have the pen tool activated, if you hold control, it's a shortcut to, to um, swap to the direct select. So I'm going to select right where I know this node is. I've selected it, and it allows me to have this uh, um, the little path editor where I can uh, smooth the, the corner. And I'm going to smooth it to where I like it. I think that's good. And I'm happy with that. So I want this end of the corner, the chin to be, uh, you know, a sharper corner, and then over here a little smoother. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so now I'm going to move into this section where the, the the muzzle is. So I know in 3D space this um, it's the cor cornerstone of like the nose is going to overlap on top of where this brow line would be. So I'm going to go ahead and overshoot this a little bit. Close close a note here. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So that's pretty good. I like that. So now basically what I want to do is I want to apply some um, stroke weight to this. So I have some profiles. You're not going to have all these. Some of these are my own custom ones. Um, this one happens to be one of the custom ones, and I'll show you how I create that. So with this selected, I'm going to hold Shift-W. 
and that's a shortcut to this tool right here, the uh, width tool. Um, I generally like to call it a stroke width tool, but um, anyway, so what I'm going to do here is the first thing I keep in mind, most people will think you go right to the end and, and taper it down like this. But I don't want to do that. I actually want to keep the thickness because I'm trying to keep consistent with the overall stroke weights. You'll lose that when you start um, knocking the ends down. So I need to think where I want the taper to basically start. So that's where I'm going to put some, some anchor points. I mean, uh, not anchor. Well, yeah, they're essentially um, stroke width anchors. But uh, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out, and I'm basically going to just match the stroke. So that's why I do that first, is because I have the stroke there, and I can use it basically as like a trace tracing mechanism. So I'm going to get real close to the width I've selected, and now I can come in and taper those to where I want them. So when I do that, it does expand out the width a little bit, so you might have to come back in and knock it down just a little bit to compensate. But that's the reasoning why I do that. So now, with that object selected and it has this um, profile, you know, the stroke width profile, I can add it to my um, profile. So that's how you create all these. I'm not going to do it because I already have one, so I'm going to just hit apply to the one that I already have. So it knocked it down just a little bit smaller. And I'm okay with that, but now we see something um, where I've over, you can see the weight that I've selected has um, really overshot where I want um, it to be. It's just knocking the eye out too much. I'm going to hit undo there. So to solve it, I'm just going to move it a little bit. I'm going to move it. I'm going to see where I have the edge there, and that looks good. So I'm going to grab this end now because that's a little bit off and move that out, and that feels good to me. So, okay, looking good. Moving on. So now I'm going to start this uh, section here. So I'm going to apply. Remember, I can do the overshoot, and that keeps the gesture really nice. And that's that's the main goal here. You want to keep the original gesture of your sketch lively um, because it's going to stiffen over time the more you make adjustments. So I'm just going to keep moving on here. Slight little bend here. Now you can see it has the last stroke width applied to it. I don't want that, so I'm going to head over here, head to the top, and go to Uniform. So that's good. So now over here... Um, I might want to apply, but I have some of the tiger's, uh, uh, you know, the dark, um, you know, black hairs um, here, and I'm going to be applying this color to all that black stuff. So this might be hidden. I might not have to worry about it. So let's move on. But we do have this overlap here. So remember, this stroke right here is on top of the muzzle, the edge of the muzzle here. So let's create a shape just to cut this one out. I'm going to, um, it's a stroke appearance right now, so I'm going to shift X to flip that, and then I'm going to apply the white to it. So now that I have it, I'm going to grab it, I'm going to hit Control X to cut, grab this one, and then I'm going to hit Control F to paste in front of it. So now we can see it didn't work, but it, it did at the same time, but this one in the stacking order isn't in the right place, because I created this after this one. And when that happens, anything each progressive step that you make is going to be on top of the last. This was the last one I did, so it's on top. So I need to move this guy to the top. I'm going to do that by holding Control and Shift and uh, hitting the close bracket, and that'll shift it all the way. So you can do the same thing um, with Object and then going to Arrange, and you have four options. You can do incremental steps, which is um, bring forward or send backwards. Or you can do the extremes, which brings stuff all the way to the front of the stacking order, or this option here, all the way to the back, and you have all those shortcuts there. So I just did that. And that looks good to me. So now we have another overlap we have to take care of, and it's just the back of the head. So this one should work out fine, because the last one we did was this, and should be on top of this one, because this was one of the first lines we used. So I'm going to go ahead and create the shape. I'm going to stay within this stroke here, so we can hide it. And then I'm going to make sure the shape takes and covers this stroke here. And of course we've got the stroke appearance applied, so I'm going to hold Shift X to swap it and then hit white. And now we have our you know our object that's going to you know, you know be used to hide the back start. So I'm going to hold control hit X. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to select this one, hold control hit F. So there we go. We've got that nice stack. So now the next thing that I need to take care of is 
this part of the chin I'm going to want to apply a stroke with too, um, as well as on this ear right here too. Um, now the only other thing that I need to take care of is basically the details um, in the mouth and this ear. So I'll go ahead and move on to that before I do the stroke with. So I'm going to go ahead and trace this ear out. And keep in mind, you want to keep your um, anchor point count to a minimum. So moving on. So these are hidden here. Don't have to worry about it because the ends are hidden inside the width of that stroke. So let's move over here now. Um, I'm going to create the teeth. So let's go ahead and trace that shape out. Close that node and close this one here. Now you can see the stroke was a little too thick um, because it's basically applied uh, equally to both sides of this path and that's where the align stroke option comes in. So you can now align the appearance to the inside of the path, the outside of the path, or equally on both the inside and out. Let's try the outside and see what we get. So I'm okay with this one. You can see now the uh, appearance has applied to the outside of this path and it's pretty thick, so I'm going to have to do some movement. Um, I don't know if I'm going to stick with this, but I'm going to move it around and just kind of see what happens and make my decision from there if this is what I want to do. So you can see I'm probably not going to be super perfect, and if I zoom in, you'll see I have that straight line from this tooth's appearance showing up here. It's ruining this backstroke, so I might have to use... Um, the little high technique I wish uh, I'd been using. Um, let me zoom out and just see how I feel about the tooth. Now this is where um, I'm going to decide to knock the stroke down. I don't think I need um, a super strong width, but I want something that's visually um, indistinguishable from the fatter weight here. They're very similar. You know, if it was, this is an eight point. So let's move it all the way down. Like you can see here, this just doesn't feel right. It's too, it's too tiny. You want them similar visually. They want to, they, they, you want them to basically have the same feel and it's just an artistic, um, you know, decision to be made. Um, so, you know, I think eight's probably the lowest without it, you know, starting to stick out and not feel a part of the, the whole design. Um, and hopefully that doesn't go over your head, but um, it's just a, the, the lowest I can get, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So let's take a look here. Um, I have a 13 point as the main, and I have an eight here. So now here's a cool thing, um, workflow-wise, to keep track of that stuff, which is graphic styles, which I have some default ones that I load into my template, stuff I use all the time when I'm you know doing high detailed stuff, but here I can use it to keep track of you know the, the sizes that I'm using. So with the, the original line weight selected, I'm gonna hit new and it'll just note it down for me. So it's 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 doing everything, it's just a stroke. And that's what's great about graphic style. So I'm gonna select the tooth here, and this will remember that I've applied it to the outside. The the path is aligned, the path's appearance is aligned to the outside, and it's got an eight-point width. So I'm going to go ahead and hit new, and now I have that one too. So now I can use this to apply on the fly. So now I'm going to just go ahead and trace out the rest of this stuff. So I've got these teeth here, they kind of bend. So I'm going to have a tiny little bend here. And then in perspective, there should be a sharp tooth here. Um, and that's okay, I might have to move it out because, I, you know, as I create it, you know, the path uh, reveals to me that I, I need to shift so I can uh, show a little bit more here. And then I have another sharp back tooth back here, so I'm going to sneak that guy over here. Now I'm going to close this one and keep it sharp. Now I don't have to close this if I don't want to. I could just leave it like that and that's fine, but I'm just going to go, it's kind of a force of habit. So now I'm going to use that uh, little um, trick we, we uh, learned earlier. I'm going to hold control with the pen tool active, and then I'm going to select this node here, and which will reveal to me if I release control, it disappears, but if I hold control, you'll see I've selected that um, anchor point, and now I can actually bend that. I don't want to bend it too much, but I'm going to bend it there to match this one here. So I'm going to zoom out and see how I feel about that tooth. I think it feels a little too small to me, so I'm going to hold control with the pen tool active and move this out. I'm going to enlarge it. So now you can see with that um, uh, 
the, the smoothness applied to that anchor point. I now have two anchor points. So I'm going to move that out. I'm going to bend this. I'm going to select this guy, bend him a little bit more. Zoom out. And, and keep in mind, zoom out, you're going to get to see the whole picture and, the, and, and it'll give you a good feel of what you got going on. Um, I think I'm happy with that. I can always change it later. So let's go ahead and just finish it up. I'm going to do some teeth here. So I'm just going to move along, keeping my node count or anchor count um, to a minimum. Now, I don't like the angle on this tooth, so I might change that right now. Close this one, come back in here. All right, cool. So now I'm going to select this and then bend the angle. Not too much. I want to keep some of that sharpness. That's a little too much. Maybe just a bit more. Okay, so now if I really need some detail, just zoom in. See what we get. How does that feel? It feels okay to me. This guy, I'm going to do the same thing. Just a little bit. Zoom out, see how it feels. Feels good. All right, so now that I have this new stroke weight, um, I'm going to apply it um, in these areas. Um, and this is where contrast comes in. And this, this is a um, principle um, foundation in graphic design is, is contrast. Um, you know, it, it's, it's putting, you know, a tiny little uh, white section in a, in a mass black area, your mind is, or, or eyes are going to be focused on that little white um, area because there's so much contrast there. Um, line weights can do that too. So if you're, if you have a, you know, a massive amount of fat stroke weights and a f cluster of small ones, you're going to get a lot of attention in those areas from, from a viewer. So eyes tend to, to be areas you want to, you know, add contrast to, and, and mouths too, so, or just faces in general, so that, that's kind of what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to use the same weight, I'm going to select the graphic style, and I'm going to trace out this nose. So let's go ahead. Um, now remember, it's just a sketch, I can make any changes I want. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here. Um, so now I've got... I have a line that kind of juts out. I know the way the muzzle, the, the nose almost like tucks into the meat on the nose. So I'm just going to go ahead and overshoot here, deselect, come in here, select this one. I'm going to hit now hit P for the pen tool, select that anchor point. Now this is where it gets tricky. If you, you see if I hover above the line, I'm going to add an anchor point. That's not what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is just click out here without dragging. So I'm going to click and then hold space bar immediately. So I can move this right in here without, um, you know, interfering with the pen tools, um, add anchor point function. And now I have it right there, and I'm happy with that. So I'm going to control click on the outside. So this is something I'm going to want to take care of with the taper. I will do that later. But right now we're just trying to get objects in place. So let's continue on. So I'm going to come in here and put the tongue in. I'm going to get close. Uh, and just end it there. Come on over here, do the same thing. And we'll overshoot. We'll just put it behind the tooth, that's fine. Um, okay, so now here's some simple solutions. This one I don't really have to create the shape. I can just knock a fill in here and that'll take care of the overlap. Now it will when it's stacked on top. This was the last line I created, so it's on top of this. I'm going to use hold control shift and close bracket to bring it all the way to the front. So I might as well do it with this one too. So I'm going to select this guy here. I'm going to apply the fill just in case. Hold Control Shift and close bracket to get it all the way to the top. Okay, cool. So that's good. So now I'm going to create these inner teeth here, and this is just kind of a, you know a simple shape. So this is going to have some overlap too. I already have the fill applied, so I'm just going to keep moving. It should work out fine, and you can see I'll get that nice overlap over here. And we'll close that out. So I don't like, this doesn't feel consistent to me, so I'm going to hold control with the pen tool and just kind of move it till it feels right. And I should do it. So that feels good. Okay, cool. Um, I think we, yeah, we got a tongue line here, so let's just go ahead and knock that in. That's going to need a stroke width to it. Um, okay, now let's get the eye. So I've got an overlap here. This um, object here needs to be in front of this one. 
and it won't be because I'm about to create this line, so naturally the stacking order is going to be on top. So I'm going to put that line there. Um, let's go to the original and see how I feel. That feels good. I want to keep that, um, but we'll take care of the overlap now. So with this one, I'm going to just send this all the way to the back. I'm going to do that with a hold, control, shift, and open bracket, and that'll send all the way to the back. You probably saw the layer shift over to the right. And now I'm going to create my little object to cut it out. So I know I just need to stay within this um, object here and its appearance, and then just create you know a random shape. So it's we're not, we have a stroke appearance. Hold Shift X to you know swap that, and then apply white to it. And then I'm going to grab my move tool, select that object, hit Control X to cut it. Now select this one and hit Control F to paste in front of that specific object. And now we have our overlap. But I see something right here. I don't like that. I want it hidden. So now we can come back in here and move it further in. And now we have it fully hidden. Okay, cool. That feels good. And I'll have to apply that stroke width to this too. So let's head over here. And there's going to be two overlaps here. This part of the brow is a nice chunk of meat that's going to be on top of this uh, shape here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to overshoot it a little bit. I'm going to click for a nice sharp angle here and I'm going to bend all the way out here. That feels good. Done with that. And we can shoot this out here. Actually, let's not even worry about this one. I'm going to hit backspace twice and that will remove um, that object. I'm going to create the eye here. So let's do that same thing. Um, you know what, I'm not going to use a circle for that. I am going to just do a custom shape, but I want to keep my anchor points to a minimum, so I'm going to bend this out and then come over here. And that feels good to me. So it's hidden behind the appearance of this uh, brow object. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Click inside the stroke and then click in over here to get this eye. So the only thing I don't like is with this appearance, it kind of shrunk the negative space. So I'm going to move it out a little bit. Feels good. That's that's cool with me. I like that. Okay, cool. Moving on. Now, uh, some minor detail stuff. Let's go ahead and I'm going to do some um, a smaller stroke width or stroke weight and put in these um, you know crunched up, uh, wrinkled up nose lines here. So, and I'm I'm going to I'll worry about the stroke weight in a little bit. And I want to make sure these are consistent and smooth because I'm basically, like I said, this whole style is based upon simplification. Um, I mean, go ahead and do your own thing if you want to add some more details. This, um, uh, all these techniques work really well with you know really nice detailed images too. So I don't know if I like this one. Let me delete it and see how I feel about it. You know what? Let's put it, yeah, you know what, I'm going to control, shift, and, um, you know, no, actually, undo, I'm sorry. Control Z to undo, that's fine, we'll, we'll leave it in there. Um, okay, now I think basically the only stuff that we have left is the black on the inside of the mouth, um, and some detailed lines here for the ear. So, let's go ahead and explore another tool. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab the line tool, I'm going to draw out a line, and I'm going to show you the same thing I just showed you earlier, which is applying a new stroke width, um, and I'm going to do it here. This is generally how I like to do it. Um, so we're at 8, and yeah, so our stroke weight's at 8, and I'm going to apply that width to it. So this time, I'm going to do one in the middle, I want to keep the stroke width consistent at the middle point and then I want them to taper off on both sides. So that's cool to me. So, now I'm going to use my graphic style. Instead of adding the profile to the width, I, you know, I have something similar, I don't need to. I can use that here. So if I apply it in here now, I can recall that anytime I need it. So I'm going to delete it now, and what I'm going to do is grab the pencil tool this time. And I do that by hitting N, is the hotkey. Um, and if you have a Wacom tablet, um, this will save you a lot of time. If you don't, um, you can use the mouse. It's just probably not going to be super fantastic. You do have some options if you double click on it 
to change um, the smoothness. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to make it, you know, throw it right in the middle. Hit OK. So now I'm going to draw out the curves um, to all these these hairs. So I, I drew this one down. Now I'm going to start by the point of this one to create this one. And I'm going to keep these overlaps in mind as I'm doing it. And I might have to change the stroke weights as I go. See how I feel about that. I'm okay with this. I, I can't say I'm super happy with it right now. But we'll move on. So now that I have them laid down with a pencil, I'm going to use my direct select, which you activate with um, A. Um, I'm going to start down here first. I see I see a gap. So that means I need to move this. So I'm going to select this one, grab the anchor point, and get it, you know, visually close to that. And I'm fine with that one. Now I'm going to move on to this one. So we got some weird stuff going on here. It's probably because of this one, so I'm going to move this in like that. And now the problem that I have here is I think this appearance is a little, the stroke weight's a little too big for this. You can see it's eight and a half, it, it enlarged, so we'll knock it down. But I'm actually going to knock it down a little bit more to seven. That's okay. And now with this direct select, I'm going to push this back up. It feels a little better. So you see a little bit of the overlap, but it's not super apparent. Um, sometimes you, you don't want it, you know something extremely apparent you want it a little smoother because when, when it's extremely apparent obviously it's calling more attention I don't want a lot of attention on just these little um, you know the, the furry ears here I want it more in the eyes so let's fix this one up I'm gonna move it down a little bit move this one over eh, maybe too much let's go back up okay let's see how I feel about that that's okay for now. I might just do two more. So I'm going to hit N for my pencil. Make sure I have my appearance. It is selected in graphic styles. I'm going to do one here. Start as close as I can to there. Zoom out. And I'm okay with that. I think I just need to do a little bit of movement. So let's select it. It's pretty close. Whoops. Selected the wrong one. Let me hit Control Z to undo. Okay. Let's select this one. Make sure I get that. Nope. So we got to keep zooming until we get it. There we go. Now I got it. Now I can move it. Zoom back out. Okay, that feels a little better. Move that up a little bit. Okay. That's fine for me. Okay, so I think we, you know, for the most part, got our stuff um, put in where we need it. I'm going to take care of the stroke widths now. So I'm going to head in here. I'm going to select this guy. I'm going to hold Shift W to get my width tool. Um, and again, keep in mind, you want to start, you want to add a point um, where you want the taper to start. And I want the taper to start here, but you can see the second I get near, the width tool snap into this. So what I'm going to do is, let's just select this guy, and what that'll do is locate it in our um, layers panel. And I'm just going to lock it. So now I can't select it. So I can head over here to work with this one. So I'm going to apply this width here, and I want it to be the same. So we'll go right there and knock it down. And you can see it's it's compensated back over here, so I'm going to have to stretch it down a little bit. So Now the other cool thing that you can do with the width tool is if you hold Alt, you can actually mess with just one side of the, um, one side's handle. So I'm going to do that here to bring it back down to uh, a little closer to what we were working with originally. Um, I like that, and I think this just might be too short. So what I'm going to do is select off for a second. Let me hold, activate my direct select. Yeah, it feels a little short to me now, so I'm going to select it now, and I'm going to move that anchor point out. It feels better, but I need to apply the bend a little bit more. Let's zoom out, see what it looks like. That feels okay. And now I need to do it to this one, so I'm going to activate the shape again, hold Shift W. I'm cool with that. Okay, so now I'm, I want the taper to start here. So I'm going to stretch it out here to match the stroke width, and then bring it on in. But you can see it compensated, so I can come into here now, this point here, and knock it down. And or, whoops, let me hit undo. Hold Alt and just apply to this one side. It feels it feels good to me, I think. So let's take a look with the zoom out. 
that feels okay to me. So, all right, so let's move to this side. So now this one, I actually have a stroke width uh, profile. Um, I'm going to go ahead and apply it. You guys can figure. Actually, let's not. I have a few, but I'll show it to you here. You can see right here, this right here will keep the original stroke width on this side and then just taper it all the way here. There's no in, um, intermediate um, width applied to the, to the middle here. So let's just go ahead and do that anyway. So over here, I'm not going to touch it. So I'm going to hold Shift W to activate the width tool. Um, I might have. I don't. I'm not going to have a problem here because I don't need to select this one. But it actually just reminded me. I need to unlock this shape right here. So let me go ahead and do that real fast. So I can't select it as you can see here, but I can see it right here with the lock. Let's just hit that. So I'm going to select this guy. No, I don't need to select this guy. Let's select this guy. Activate the stroke width tool with Shift W and then head over here and we're just going to knock it down. So you'll automatically see we might have a problem and that is it just got too thin because a lot of the thickness is hidden behind here so let's just knock the width up. Now we have a problem here but I can use my stroke width here hold alt whoops let's get let's hover in front of this hold alt and stretch it back in behind the appearance of this one over here and that's okay. So let's do it over here. I'm going to actually apply a new one here, but I'm going to hold Alt just to get that one side to fatten it up a little bit. And that feels good. Okay, let me hit this move, I mean the selection tool just to remove that appearance that you see from the stroke width tool. Okay, that feels good. So now with these guys, I already know what I want. We already have the stroke width profile. You probably sh or should have been saving them. Uh, these ones here, I know I just want them to have that width applied to both ends. So I'm going to use this one here. And that feels good. I like that. So now let's just go ahead. Um, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to create another profile. Um, let's remove this. So I, there's two ways. You can come in here, scroll all the way up and hit uniform, or you can hop back to a previous style that already has it uniform, which I'll do there. This would probably be a little quicker. So now with this one um, activated, I'm going to switch to my width tool, hold shift W, come to the end here. I, I, you'll see me I move out. I like to see it activate first. Sometimes it it's, uh, works a little uh, weird sometimes. So I always go out first so I can see the actual width tool's appearance and its edges to gauge where I'm at, and then I'll smush it down. So I smush it down all the way. I'm okay. And basically, I'd head over here, go to my width profile, and you can see it's, it's giving you a live view of what you have. Hit the drop down or pop up menu and go ahead and save it. And that'll save it. But I already have it, so I don't need it. I just wanted to show it to you guys. So I'm going to delete. I'm going to head into here. Now, I see behind here I'm fine. This stroke's going to come all the way out here and taper. We'll just do it to this one. I don't need to because I know I'm going to apply black here. This will be all hidden, but I just want to visually show you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that uh, profile width we just created. And you'll see it uh, really mushed stuff down, so I think I've got a problem there. I might not use that profile. I know other areas it will be, so I'm going to hit undo, but I just wanted to show you. So let's grab this one. I can apply it to this one for sure. That's pretty good. Um, I just might need to fatten it up a little bit, and I'm happy with that one. Let's give it a go on this one. Uh, this one's probably not going to work because I'm going to want the taper to start right here where these two lines converge. So let's just go ahead and get in there and do that. So I'm going to grab my stroke width so I can grab it over here or hit Shift W. Um, but you can see I have a problem now. I, this is one single object, but you see the width tool is kind of snapping. So. Um, what you're going to want to do here is just zoom in. Um, yeah, and once you're zoomed in, I don't. It doesn't have to be perfectly right where this is, but I can move it. You know, about here. Let's just apply it here by clicking. Whoops. Let me hit undo. I can click right here. Let's just apply it. And then the cool thing is, you can grab that center point and move it. So just keep that in mind. Um, which I'll actually, I'll do here. We'll get to about here. That'll work, and now I can come in here and apply my taper. And that is totally cool with me. I'm going to grab my move, I mean, uh, selection tool, hit V, just so I can kind of see it. And yeah, that's okay with me. Let's grab this guy here 
and we're going to do the same thing. We'll apply that profile to it. Now we've got a problem. It applied it the wrong way. Simple fix. It's just flip it. And that feels good. I'm going to add a little bit of weight to it, and that's fine. But we've got a little bit of a problem. It's poking out over here, so I'm going to hit the shortcut A for my drag select, grab this anchor point, and we'll just hide them in. Okay, looking good, looking good. Um, all right, we got to apply to the ear. So I know where I want the taper to start. I want it to start um, decreasing from here. So hold Shift W to activate the width tool. I'm going to grab, I'm going to click here, and I'm going to drag out. you got to find the direction. I'm, I'm moving down, and it pinched it, so I need to move out. So that's where I want it. That's cool. And then I'm going to pinch it, but keep in mind it will compensate the rest of the stroke width that's close to it. So um, it feels a little funny here, so on this back side. So I'm going to hold Alt on this one, and maybe drop this down just a bit. Okay, I'm cool with that. So that's okay. Okay, now we got to take care of the overlap over here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to create the shape, hide it behind this appearance here, and make sure it covers the point that I want to overlap. So I have this appearance applied to it. I'm going to hit Shift X to swap and then hit white for my fill, grab my um, selection tool, select the object, control X to cut it away, grab this uh, object here, and then hit control F to paste in front of it. And voila, it's gone. Okay, so now I'm gonna select this object here. Um, this is gonna be tucked behind the black on the mouth, so I'm not necessarily worrying about this end. Um, but I want to apply the taper, and I want it to start here, so hold Shift W, start the taper from here, match the stroke width the best I can, and then pinch this guy all the way down. And that feels good to me. All right, cool. Um, okay, what else can we do here? All right, yeah, so let's finish that up. So now, at this point, um, we've kind of got all the major lines in. Now we need to um, create our, our unique fills, uh, our objects that are just going to have fills applied to them. I'm not, I'm, I don't really need strokes at this point anymore. Um, so let's go ahead and... and uh, actually, we have one more I just noticed. Uh, let's go ahead and apply this forehead line here. So I'm going to click this to bend it a little bit and then throw it back. Now it's, it's using that... Uh, last appearance I had, I'm going to apply the equal taper. And it feels a little too thick of a line, so let's drop her down maybe to 10. That feels good. Cool. I like that. All right, so yeah, let's move on to the fill objects. Okay, so let's get a... I'm going to start with the mouth here. Uh, now, this might get a little tricky because we're probably going to have to create some uh, overlap shapes to kind of hide some stuff. So I'm going to start back here, uh, and I'm going to have this kind of jump out over here a little bit. As I did. This, this um, part of his anatomy kind of juts out from, from the lip. So I have that previous appearance still going with it. Um, and this is where you know the artistic side kind of comes in. So you might want to rely on your sketch, which is fine, or just get a little creative which I'm going to do, so um, I'm just going to kind of create um, what I feel like would work well as fur. But with that in mind, I want to create shapes that flow in the direction the hair would be moving. So I'm going to do that. And at the same time, you know, with the tigers, um, black stripes and stuff, they're kind of cool. They have their, their unique look to them, so keep that in mind when you're creating. So now, these, um, this section over here, um, this is where the, the whiskers um, are at, which I'm not going to have in, in my final art, or maybe I, I might. But the, the whiskers happen here, and, and the black hairs tend to kind of um, uh, merge around those, those whiskers to a degree. So I'm, I'm just simplifying them into, um, like, dashed lines. So um, that's, that's basically what I'm doing here. So, now what I'm going to do is try to mimic the same shape 
for each line because it's basically so what it is is it's an anchor point with a um, with a curved path and then as it comes over here it's kind of like a straight line that tapers so let's just keep that in mind as I'm creating these new ones so I create the curve a straight line and then I have it taper and you can see I'm not on top of my sketch because it, you know I, I'm uh, you know making decisions on the fly to what feels good to me and if it looks bad I can always move it you know it's the great thing with uh, the vector stuff so let's go ahead and do that here I know this one's gonna stick out the most this one's kind of you know doesn't stick out too much and then this one just kinda of falls off towards the end and then I'm gonna tuck it in over here and now basically this is where I can hide stuff so I'm gonna stay with inside stay inside of these appearances and basically hide my fill shape, but you'll see it's going to want to try to connect to some, some stuff, so be careful. And if it does, you can click out over here, hold space bar, don't drag around too much because then your anchor point's going to kind of go crazy, but get close to the original, hold space bar, move it to that area. So I need to be careful, but I'm, I'm good. Just pay attention while you're creating. You don't want to connect some open point. So this is fine. I'm going to st sneak behind this tooth here. I'm just hiding inside of this appearance, basically. Now this tooth, you can see, this new line I'm creating is on top, but I need to, you know, change the stacking order, but I can come right behind the tooth object, stay in the appearance, and then just connect these lines. So now that I'm done with that, I can hold Shift X to change the appearance to a fill. That looks pretty good, and now there's a few things i got to do. I'm going to change my stacking order. So this needs to be on top. I'm going to select the tooth, hold Control Shift, close bracket, I'll drop that bad boy right on top. I'm going to select this guy here just so I can see where the path is. I'm going to hold, um, hit A, um, the A shortcut to get my direct select, click, uh, click that anchor point, and now I can tuck him in. Now this feels a little weird. It's a little too straight for me, so I'm going to bend it out here. Move this guy down, see how I feel about it. Uh, here's a little zoom trick uh, you might not know about. You can hit control, minus, and plus to zoom in and out. You can also use the wheel on your mouse. If you hold alt and drag, you can zoom in and out. It's like one of my favorite ways to zoom. Um, and that feels okay to me. I'm happy with that. Okay, so moving on. So I have one up here. It's kind of isolated by itself, but we'll get that taken care of. And we have some, um, you know, they're kind of um, foreshortened and tucking off into the distance. we got to take care of those. Uh, we've got some stuff on the eyes over here. So let's just go ahead and move along. So I don't want that appearance on there. I'm pretty comfortable with the fill. Um, you know, I kind of know where I'm heading, so the, I'm just going to go ahead and work it in there. So I'm going to create that curve there, taper it down. That got a little too thin too quick for me, so I might have to bend that up a little bit. Zoom out, and I'm cool with that. So let's just keep on moving. So I know I have a, there's a, the tiger has like a black line that tucks down over here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and create that. Close the node to sharpen it. So you can see it's trying to pull me into this, this path here, but it's not an open one, so it should be fine. It's not, I'm not going to connect it to the appearance. Because sometimes if it's open like this one here, you can see that the icon next to the pen tool, that little square with the two lines jutting out, which basically means it's an open. If I click on this, it'll show you. It now connected the appearances together because you became a part of this object. I don't want that, so I'm going to hit Control Z. Be careful, that's what's going to happen. So now I, I, I know my move right here. I want it to bend, but I also want it to, to um, bend back in the opposite direction over here. So I'm going to do my little trick again. Click here, not drag, hold space bar, move right, right up close to that. Now that I have it, I can bend my anchor point the way I want it, and then come over here to bend it back in and then tuck this in, because I wanted to have that nice little sharp angle here. And then click off, see how I feel about it. And I'm cool with that, so let's go ahead and create this shape now. So remember, the style, you really want to keep your anchor point down. Uh, anchor uh, count down. So now, and, and get a little crazy, have fun. You, know, don't, you don't have to stick so stringently to your initial sketch. 
So now the fill's kind of messing with me a little bit to a degree, but um, I'm just going to show you how I deal with it. Just look at the path. You can see the red line. You know what the sketch was there for the most part, and this will come with time. Um, doesn't always work out that way. And even then, with the pen tool activated, if I don't like, oh, I missed it because of the fill, hold control and just move it. So I'm going to close that one here because I want to add like a little bit of a negative space knockout like the hair. The white hair jumped over the black. Uh, I'm going to head over here and that to follow this, this line uh, and the way it contours. So I'm going to jump back. This feels a little weird. This feels a little too skinny compared to this one and I want them similar. So let's tuck this guy in a little bit. Bend him back to move with this white hair that's jumping into the, the uh, space of the, uh, the black fill. And then I'm going to fatten this guy up a little bit here. Move him away. And you'll see, I'm judging distance. The negative space here, I want similar all around. You know, you're going to see him. This is, this is um, a good gauge right here. I can use this to kind of feel this one out. They're, they're close. So, you know, that's, you, just, you need to keep all those things in mind. You know, if you've got a stroke weight, keep them consistent for the most part. If you've got some negative spaces, use those negative spaces to judge others. So I have one here, one here to judge from, uh, maybe even this one here. They're, they're all fairly close. Okay, so moving on. Alright, uh, I think at some point I might want to do some editing here. Well, actually, I am going to be doing some editing here to uh, kind of add some hair lines. But, uh, yeah, let's, let's uh, keep going on these fills. So you can see, I'm just basically trying to stay organized. Um, I want to, um, you know, uh, work progressively um, with specific groups, starting with contour lines, working into the detailed lines, and then moving into the uh, the fills. I mean, everybody has their own, um, you know, workflow, but that's basically mine. Um, so I've made an error here, and basically that error is keeping with the idea of, um, you know, extending a path um, so that I don't sacrifice the gesture. That's kind of what's happening here. I was starting to build two shapes at the same time, which I really don't want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. <coughs> I'm going to switch this back to fill. So I'm going to create this shape first and then have this secondary um, shape come out of it. So let's see here. I want to simplify because I want to use um, the least amount of anchors as possible uh, to create this shape. So with that in mind, I'm going to come here and then finish it up with that. And I'm going to have this secondary shape coming out of this one uh, built second. So, and I'm going to simplify this one too. So I'm going to zoom out. I don't know how I feel about that one. Let's go ahead and adjust. Okay, that feels okay for now. I'm going to leave it be. So let's go ahead and create this one now. So. This eye, I know it's got a thicker line down here. Uh, and now this doesn't necessarily touch. Um, they're like two separate shapes. So this comes out from the brow line. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. So I'm basically going to kind of override that stroke back there, which is fine. Sometimes you have to do that. So I'm going to create that there. A little bend of this, have it tucked back in, come in here. Now keep in mind, yeah, the fill's blocking it. Um, at any point, I could actually locate, because this is the active one, hold control and cl um, click the um, icon here. Why is that giving me trouble? Um, you know what? I think um, this OBS here is blocking the use of control. But if you held control uh, on this specific path and clicked on the... Um, thumbnail for this the visibility it would turn it into outline mode so let's see if I can um, uh, no I don't see that there no, that's fine we'll just keep moving um, I'm gonna click this I'm gonna hit, uh, hit shift X to go into uh, stroke this is another workaround for it um, 
basically head over here. Whoops, not that one. Let's select this one. Hit our pen tool to activate it. And finish that off. Switch it right back to fill mode with the shift X. And I'm okay with that one. So now I have this shape coming out of that one. I'm just going to go ahead and simplify it. I don't have to keep exact with the sketch. And I'm okay. Close that one. So now I think I want to thicken this up a little bit. So I'm going to hold control. I have the pen tool activated. Hold control. Bend this out. And do the same thing here. I'm going to have to push that back in. Uh, no, actually, we'll get to the edge here. Thicken that out. Now, you'll see I'm trying to keep this line consistent with that stroke. That's kind of basically what I'm doing there. Uh, now I'm going to extend this one out. So I see a line kind of being created here, so I'm going to extend it out this way. Create a line there. And then finish it off right there with the appearances and I'm okay with that I'm okay with that so let's create a shape here um, there's a lot of detail here I might keep let me see let's just bend this out tuck that in like that bend this out see how I feel about that I'm okay with that one too so now these ones I'm just gonna keep really really simple and then in. Cool with that. And then this one here, do the same thing. Just keep it simple, but unique. Go here. Now, this one's going to kind of mess with me, so I'm going to hold Shift and X, get back to the stroke. Whoops. And let's just create a shape like that. Uh, here and you can see now I see I need to keep a specific thickness here so that's basically what I'm working out and then shift back let's zoom out see how we feel about that it's a little too tight in here so what I might do is just extend this down so I'm gonna undo what I just did so now if I hold control and then shift I can select multiple specific nodes or anchor points and now I can hold control after I let go of shift and move all those specific ones to give myself a little more space that feels a little better to me so remember this negative space is kind of close to these others if you judge the distance they're very similar so you're kind of you know you're keeping them consistent so this one connects here let's just continue on I'm gonna hold shift X to get to stroke so I can kind of see what's going on here and I'll just go here. So I've got a shape there. Just point this out, come back down, and bend this one in. And then Shift X to go back to fill. So that feels pretty good. So let's just keep moving. So same thing here. These look like they connect, so I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to come here, a little bit of a tuck in there, and then I'm going to just bend this one. Now you can see I, I didn't like it, so I held spacebar to adjust it. I'm going to close it, keep it sharp, and then head back up. Zoom out. Uh, it's a little thin here. This, this section here feels a little thin, so I'm going to come in here and thicken it up. I'll do that by holding control. While I have the pen tool, you can see that the icon shifts. When I hold control, click this anchor point, I'm going to push it in so it should fatten this up, but it might shrink this one too small, so I might have to come into here move them around a little bit. I'll do that. That should feel a little better. It feels okay. So now that I'm looking at it, this one here feels a little thin. So I might come in here, hold control, and now I'm going to hold control and shift, click this one. So now I've got two selected. I'm going to release shift, but still holding control. Click that anchor point, drag it, and you can see now I've thickened it up. Now, the negative space caused here, I'm almost guaranteeing I'm not going to like it. Yeah, it's calling too much attention, so I'm just going to, with, with them still selected, hold control, click, and just drag them in here. Now, the negative space here might bother me, so I might move them up a little bit. So let's back up. It feels a little better to me. I think I like that. Okay, so we'll keep with that. 
Now I know I have one in the ear over here, so I'm going to go ahead and start over here, but I'm going to use the gesture, the direction, the rhythm of this object here to dictate the, the curve I'm, or bezier I'm going to apply to this path. So I'm going to click over here and just kind of keep with the, the, the gesture. So that's good. But I'm also going to keep it over here too, to a degree. So I'm going to stay on the inside. I'm going to bend this out and then just keep it hidden. The path is hidden within the stroke of this one here. I'm cool with that. I know I have it over here, so I'm going to create over here. A little bend, and the ear is kind of rounding around, so I want, I want my path to round around the same way for the most part. And then I'm going to you know, fill it in. Now keep in mind, see that right there? Open path, I need to be careful. So I'm going to click out here, hold space bar, move it in. And keep, and then finish my shape. Close that node, and then close the path. So I'm cool with that. So this little shape is kind of similar to these other little negative space shapes. So um, I can always expand it. Actually, I think I will because there's a little corner here that I want to show. So I'm going to click, whoops, click here, click, oh. So see, we got a problem here. I might have to lock this path. I have it selected. I see it here. No, nope, that's not it. It's down here. Lock it. Come over here, grab this guy. We'll move it over here move this guy. Now we've exposed that corner, which I like. I'm going to unlock that other one so I can continue working with it. Yeah, okay. That feels a little better to me. So let's, let's move on with our fills. So this kind of is almost like a V shape, so let's go ahead and create it. I'm going to come here and here, here, and then, uh, you know, I'm going to head up here to finish it. Now, there there's symmetry to this, and you can do that, but it's also a weird asymmetry to the the stripes as well so you want to kind of keep that it, it'll feel organic um, and not you know just mirrored so let's go ahead and just keep this one super simple on this side because in my mind this side of his face um, is where I want to really call the attention on this side I'm going to keep it pretty simple because I'm not really calling attention to that side you know, so it'll work with that um, asymmetrical symmetry, <laughs> um, if you will. So same thing here. I'm just going to kind of lightning bolt this one, but I got to I got to keep in mind um, the negative spaces that I'm dealing with. I think that's okay. I think I can get away with this one. Uh, maybe if I fatten this up a little bit, I'll be happier. And just move this down. Put this guy down, and that. Okay, that feels a little better. All right, so she's coming together. Okay, I got a shape over here I got to take care of, so let's go ahead and we'll create this one here. So, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this one. You know what? I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this here, pen tool, and then I'm going to hit the minus signal. I'm getting rid of, whoops, not minus signal. I need to grab this one here, delete, grab this one here with the direct select, delete, and then I can grab both these and hit control J to join them. And then I can move this guy around. So I'm going to hit key for the pen tool and then hold control, activate this guy. I have them both selected, so let's, let's move it around where we want it. I'm going to select this one here, and then pen tool, and then hitting minus to delete that specific one. So hold control with the pen tool, and we're good. So pen tool there. I think I bent this on accident, so what I'm going to do is now hold control, I mean uh, shift C, and that all. Uh, this is our convert anchor point tool, so I'm just going to click this one to um, sharpen it. Remove the Bezier. So I'm going to hit T for pen tool now. Move back out. Um, there was a black spot over here. I'm going to ignore it. Um, I don't want to sacrifice the negative space over here. Um, okay, moving on. So I see this eyebrow line needs to be reflected over here for the most part. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to actually ignore the sketch for the most part. Um, I think I'm going to need two anchor points here. 
hold control, click here. And so I'm just basically kind of fattening it out, but I have to keep in mind in perspective, um, you know, it's gonna it's gonna taper off a bit. So now also keeping in mind, I know his eye's got a line here, but um, over here, I don't think I'm gonna play with it too much. Um, because I think we'll, we'll run into some issues with the negative space. So let's just, let's see how we're going to solve this problem. I think I'm just going to wrap something around here. I don't want that one to undo. Bend it, poke it out a little bit here, and then hide it in this um, object over there on the side. Uh, hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. You know what? Let's get rid of it. Let's try over here. Let's just tuck a line in over here and see how we feel about it. Nope, way too weird. This is this direction's matching this one. It just feels funny to me. So maybe let's try like an arrow or a B point, something like that. Let's see how that feels. That feels a little better, um, and then maybe throw one out here. Let's see how we feel about that. A little better. A little better. Alright. I'm going to move that out a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. That feels good to me. Alright, so moving on. So now I can keep that similar theme um, as far as shapes here. Or not. And I don't think I have to, but let's give it a go. Something like that. And then these ones I'm not really even going to worry. I'm just going to taper them off. I want to keep them a little more simple on this side. That's okay. Throw one more here. Just kind of keeping keeping in mind my negative space too. These are kind of similar here, and then maybe just a tiny little guy poking out over here. All right, that feels good. So, I basically what I have left, I got to add in the nostril, a black fill here, and then we'll we'll get to editing this line over here. I might even just scrap it. But let's see here. So I'm just going to tuck a nostril in over here. That's good, and then add. Uh, at the base of his nose, it's just like a black strip. So you're going to see I could collide with this anchor point here, which is fine. I'm going to use it. And cool. All right, that feels pretty good to me. So I think I need some details here. So there's a couple routes we can do. Um, and actually, I think I need a couple tricks. So I'm going to gra grab my pen tool. I'm going to hop back to graphic styles. I'm going to grab this um, um, path that has the taper added to it. We'll drop that in there and one in here, and I'm going to select them, and I'm going to drop, oh, not that one, and I'm going to drop the stroke weight. So these feel similar to each other, they're right in, right in the zone. Zoom out. Uh, maybe bend this guy a little bit more. I might even just get rid of it, but let's just see before we do that. Let's keep in mind these wrinkles, this side's tucking in, and this side would be tucking in as well. So I think I'm okay with that. I'm gonna kinda I'm gonna turn off the sketch for now. I don't really need it so much now. But yeah, that feels pretty good. I'm okay. So let's turn the sketch back on. So yes, we have the option to keep this simplified on the outside. A lot of logos, that's what it's all about. It's just keeping things pretty simple. Um, but let's see, I'm going to grab the pen tool again, I'm going to have that, um, this time I'm going to use that uh, the single the single sided uh, taper here. See what we get, so let's see what happens. So the taper's happening in the wrong direction, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this guy, and I'm going to get him to the stroke weight that I think is going to work well. Um, that's pretty close, I'll move that in so I can We'll keep going, we'll fatten them up. And I'm actually going to come in here, Shift W, and just fatten them up over here. And then maybe shrink them down a little bit here. Move this in. And I'm going to say this is a graphic style, I don't want that profile. 
saved. So I'm just going to use it as a graphics style. And I can recall it if I want. That actually feels pretty good. Just that one alone's helped out this entire side. So maybe let's just try a couple more. It's selected. You can see the black uh, outline there. So with this one, I have to start from the inside and go to the outside. If I do it the opposite way, the, the style will look a little funny. That's pretty cool. Now, we've got some symmetry going here. Um because these two shapes are almost equal distance, so I'm going to switch that up just a little bit by not having it here. Yeah, that feels a little better, and I think this solution I like, and I'm going to keep it, um, and just do one last one here. That's pretty good. I like it. I'm going to keep it. So I'm going to come in here, though. i got to tweak this just a bit, just to hide that. And I'm pretty happy with that, so... Um, I think the only thing left is maybe a couple right here, and I might add one right here. So let's go ahead and knock one in over here. Let me turn off the sketch. I don't need it anymore. Uh, I don't need that. Let's go ahead and delete it. But the chin, I think I will. So let's put a small one in here, and another one in here, just to kind of show how the hair is moving there. Uh, but we got a problem, we got some overlapping. Um, this solution, I'm just going to go ahead and expand these guys. So I'm going to go to Object, Expand Appearance. And with them both selected, I'm going to hold Shift E and just come in here and erase inside the stroke, and that'll take care of that problem. So that's cool. I think actually, let's turn the sketch on one more time. I've got some black stuff here, so I do, i got one more fill i got to add in. Let's go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to play with the ear a little bit. I'm going to have this come in, jut in, come back inside, because I want like, there's like white, uh, or lighter, I wouldn't say white, but lighter fur here, overlapping a black section, and then add a point here, and I think I'll go interconcave there, and we're good, let's see. Hmm, I might pull this down a little bit, so I'm going to grab this corner here, throw it down in, with this negative space in mind, I'm going to bend this one, and then bend this guy back in. We'll go like that. That feels, that feels pretty good for now. Alright, cool. So I'm going to turn the sketch off, see what we got. That feels really good. Um, there's a lot of consistency going on. The only thing right here, this is kind of bothering me. I might pull this guy out a little bit more. Not the, f the overlap, whoops. So I'm having a problem with the overlap. I'm going to select it. I see it right here. I'm going to lock it. Grab this guy. I'm going to pull him out. Whoops, not move him. I'm going to pull him out a little bit. So click, make sure you got the uh, anchor point selected. I'm going to stretch him out just a little bit more. So you can see that, maybe just even a little bit more. Pull this guy out just a little bit more and down. Yeah, it feels a little better. So you can see that overlap a little better. So unlock the one I locked. Okay, that's, um, yeah. So I think uh, pretty much what I call liner is done. So we've got all those overlaps, and now we'll go into coloring. Um, and I'll show you basically, um, you know, how to handle this guy. I'm going to basically duplicate all this stuff and then apply a merge to that duplicated stuff because I want to, you know, if I need to come back, I want to have all these paths set up. So let's, uh, let's hop into that. Okay, so what I'm basically going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, just duplicate this layer. So this is like a working layer. If I need to come back and do some changes, I have it there. So I'm going to click and drag that layer onto new, uh, a new layer icon. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn this one on. Uh, lock it just in case. So I'm going to select layer 2 now. I'm going to grab everything. And uh, I'm going to show you, uh, here's the shortcut, uh, Control shift d will actually show you the transparency of your document. It removes all the white. Uh, you can see the canvas um, uh, boundary right here. Uh, so I want to kind of see what's going on. So you can see all those little overlaps we created. That's We're in this step removing those. Uh, we're applying them and, and then removing them. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go to Object, Expand Appearance. So that took all the paths and turned them into objects. I'm going to do one more. I basically always do this. I do Sometimes I do like five expands, uh, flatten transparencies, all sorts of stuff you can do. But I always do like a double expand. I'll do one more for good measure. So I'm going to hit uh, Control 
A to select all again, object, expand, do one more so I make sure I got everything. And now I'm going to head to Pathfinder and I'm going to hit Merge. So now it's applied the merge, it's created, um, you know, now new custom shapes um, with all the overlaps. So now with the magic wand selected, uh, I'm going to make sure in the magic wand settings, and you can get to this panel by either going to Window and uh, the magic wand, or you can double click uh, the wand and that would show up. But I already have it here, so it's not, it's not going to pop up. So I'm going to go to Tolerance. So this will have the tolerance of 70, I mean 70, 32 uh, steps from that specific um, uh, lightness or brightness um, or hue. And I don't want that. I want one because I'm targeting one specific color, which is that white. So I'm gonna now that I have that applied, I'm gonna target the white, and it'll select all the white objects. And now I'm just gonna hit backspace to delete them. I'm gonna grab my direct select tool, select all, or hit Control All, and you can see that there are still paths there. I need to remove that by hitting Merge in Pathfinder, and now you can see they've disappeared. So now I basically have just the line art. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hit Control. Um, and copy uh, with C. Uh, so it's Control C to copy. We can come to uh, edit, copy. So now that I have this copied, I'm going to go ahead and in the Pathfinder hit Unite. So now it's going to basically um, take the outermost path and unite anything on the inner. So it'll basically remove everything. So now that I have that, what I'm going to do is my midtone color, I'm going to apply that. So you can see right here, the fill right here is that navy. I don't want that. I want to have, because essentially we're coloring this in, um, and just apply my midtone color to that. And I'm going to create a new layer, and then I'm going to hit Control F to paste in front, because that copy we have. So now that we have that, it actually copied into the wrong layer. So I'm going to grab it, put it into this layer here, lock it. So I don't want to mess with the, the, um, the line art at all. I'm, I'm past that stage. So now I have a background midtone, and I'm actually not happy with it. So I'm going to go ahead and shift this color. Uh, I'm going to change my color mode to, um, to HSB. It's just easier to work with um, because you have the hue, the saturation, and the brightness. So I think what I want to do is I'm going to move I'm going to move the hue over a little bit. Let's hit preview so it does it live. Uh, I think I'm a little happier with that. Um, Let's just go with that for now. So when I hit that, you can see when I hit preview, it's because we set it to global. You can see that it's global with the little um, white triangle in the bottom right corner of the swatch. It means it's global. And I have a template when I create new documents that automatically loads all these guys as globals so I can change them on the fly. Um, okay, so I'm fine with that for now. So now we basically need to create um, the highlight shapes. Um, you can do this in the sketch phase, and I would um, advise doing that, um, which uh, I basically did. Um, but you need to think of it um, the way an artist does, um, and and that's the planes. And by planes, I'm, I'm talking the faces. If you're looking at a 3D object, like a box uh, or a cube, you know, if you shine a light on the top of a box, that top plane is going to be the brightest. And then as you move away from the light, they're going to get darker. So that's kind of how you think. And But this, we're only doing two colors, which is a shadow color and a highlight color. So we only need to find the planes that are facing the light, which would be the top of the nose, the top of the forehead. Over here, uh, the cheekbone would maybe poke out a little bit. And that's really all that's touching light. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. And this one needs to be on top of the uh, shadow layer. So I'm going to lock the shadow layer. I'm going to... Uh, apply my fill as um, the the highlight color. Now let's go ahead into our pen tool and uh, basically get trace in here. So um, we can do some pretty simple stuff and that's how you want to start is just think of the overall shape of the nose. It's almost like a V shape. So I'm going to come behind this line art here and I'm going to trace out that shape that I think would be here. So I know the, f the muzzle kind of moves in a curve, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm applying a curve. I know right here there's probably going to be some light, so let's just keep that pretty simple. Right in here the eye kind of tucks into the head, so I'm going to ignore that for now. But I'm going to come over here, bend back in. 
a little bit and I'll come right here I'll tuck this in over here uh, hmm. so that's mainly why I'm doing it I want to see you guys or let you guys see how I figure this stuff out so I'm hiding behind the line art at the moment I'm gonna have it come out and you know with the positive space instead of negative space I'm gonna create the hairs that I think are there so I know this, you know, the, the top of the head is going to come down. And then, let's see here, I'm going to create. So what I'm basically doing is carving out, you know, like three hairs here. Uh, not three individual hairs themselves, but it's clusters of hairs. Um, and then this out here, because then the ear is blocking light on the inside. So I'm going to ignore all that, come over here. Top of this ear will catch light, so I'm going to light all that up come back on this side and then as we get over here that remember the the eyes are inside of a socket so we need to show that by lighting them appropriately come behind the rest of this nose over here so if you can see where the black um, fills are, are, are showing where the whiskers basically start I need to pay attention to that over here and, and mimic it I'm gonna come over here and it comes on this this highlight comes on top of this last whisker shape so I need to do the basically the same thing over here and then I'm going to come and follow that line art path and hide behind it and I'm going to zoom out and see what we got it feels pretty good so if, it, if you're looking at this like a light was shining on it um, you know that's that's where the light would be hitting so I know it also is going to hit over here so let's create a shape over here but I want to keep some negative space so remember the negative space with this line art, we want to keep consistent with this stuff here. So I'm going to create a shape here. And basically, I'm just mimicking the hairs that I think are clustered into groups here to create this shape. Now, I'm going to go ahead and light the, the uh, I know on the tiger, this front part of his nose is all white. I'm going to hit undo and just kind of come down here. Uh, the nose, I don't want to light. It is pink, but I'm going to go ahead and ignore it for now. Uh, I'm going to go right here and then follow back in with this. And let's see how I feel about that. Okay, so this definitely is going to bother me. I think I need to just move this down. So we got a problem. I need an extra node. So I'm going to hit pen and then the plus sign, create the new node. And then with my direct select, I'm going to hit A, grab this anchor point and bring it down. Um, I think I'm just basically going to make it one big shape here and have these converge out over here. So I'm going to bend this. Like out over here. That feels good. So I, got, I need to do that over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just create the shape. Stay behind the line art. And I'm okay with that. Okay, so that feels pretty good. It's like, remember the flashlight shining down, I'm trying to catch the right uh, areas in light. So I think down here, this hair kind of juts out, and I think would catch some light. So I'm going to come into here and show that by creating little groups of hairs that I think are catching light. So I'm going to come over here, create one more little group of hairs here. And have it come behind the, hide behind the line art. So I'm just kind of not worrying about the shapes and trying to keep them perfect. Zoom out. It feels pretty good. And I think I need one more shape, which is the corner right here of the cheek. They have cheekbones here, so we need to kind of show that cheekbone. So I'm just going to keep it real simple again. Uh, and I think I'll have it tucked behind this line art here. But I'm going to let it follow, what, there's like a rhythm line here, and have it follow that behind here. And then, yeah, maybe a sharp end right there. Let's zoom out, see how we feel. Yeah, let's go ahead and move this maybe over here, see how we feel. Let's have it, that, that cheekbone just kind of, you know, point at that ear. Maybe move it down a little bit more. Um, yeah, that feels pretty good. I think I'm going to get his teeth now. Go ahead and just trace out these teeth. I can keep it one shape if I want, which I think I will, or do the individual shapes if I want. That's totally up to you. Come in here.
here, do the same thing here with all these teeth. And the cool part is I've got that liner layer on top so I can just hide behind all that. I'm not worrying about, you know, keeping the shapes perfect and recreating teeth. It's just a waste of time. Okay, I like that. Um, I don't know how I feel about the eyes being in light, so let's give it a go. See what uh, see what happens. Yeah, I think they pop a little bit more. I don't want to hide them in the shadow, so we'll just make sure the eyes are nice and light. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And let's see with a little bit of chin. Maybe let's just do the whole chin. I know that chin on them's all white hair, so let's see how I feel about it. Um, yeah, I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, I think I'll go with that. All right, so now I want to add some extra little details. So you can see this guy jutting in. I could have done that with all this stuff, but why not make our lives a little easier and grab our pencil tool. So I'm going to grab the pencil tool, head over to our graphic styles. Um, I'm going to use our little taper here. So let's see which direction. So I need to start from this direction to get the point that I want. And that's fine, but I actually need to change the stroke weight and the color. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to apply the correct color I want, which is the mid-tone here. So we'll do that. And I'm going to knock up our, uh, our width here. Uh, we'll go a little lower than that. Uh, that's good right there. So I like that. I'm going to create a new graphic style so I can recall it when I need. All right, let's get sketching. So I'm going to grab it and uh, apply it here. So now I need to be careful because I'm starting to, um, you know, create a pattern. You don't want to do that to keep that uh, from happening. Change it up a little bit. So I'm just kind of knocking in a curve. I'm trying to get it right smooth. So let's knock up the smoothness here to the max. We'll hit OK. Come down here. That's OK. I like that. We'll do some here because the hair is kind of curling over in this direction. So let's keep that direction going. See what we get. Okay, now these tiny little shapes right here are too close together. I think they're calling too much attention, so I'm going to get rid of that. So let's move it up here. And try there. I think I'm okay with that. Let's try it here near the eye. Whoops. Whoops. I'm okay with that. Let's do that here. Now what I'm going to do is just grab the eye shape, control shift, close bracket to bring it to the front, and now I can kind of play around with this without affecting this too much. So I want to move this lower, I think. And now they're kind of pointing at each other in perspective. Uh, with that in mind, I'm going to move this down a little bit. Okay, I'm cool with that. So, now with this graphic style, I'm going to go ahead and apply this again. I'm going to select it. And I'm going to go to the stroke. And now I'm going to have the double-ended. That's that new style. I'm going to knock down the width to, let's go to, like, 15. And create a new style. And I can recall this one. So now I have two different tapers that I can recall. And the reason why I'm doing that is I'm coming into these guys. I want to add some shadows to them. And, you know, the... the the bends here in the nose. So let's grab that, activate our pen tool. That's kind of cool. I don't, my accuracy kind of stinks, so let's go ahead and just use the pen tool to do it. Bend it in. I like it, but it needs to be thinner. So let's thin it up a bit, and then with our pen tool, activate a whole control and tuck those. That was a little too much, I'm going to zoom in. It was a little too much of a move. I want this to kind of bend down together. So let's see if we can create that. I'll move this in here. Yeah, now they're kind of moving together. It doesn't have to be perfect, just something close. I'll click off there. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm okay with that. So I'm going to apply that to these guys too. So start here. See where the, the rhythm is just kind of pointing in that direction? Follow that direction. Generally will work out well. So something I clicked off to nothing, so they, we lost the the graphic style. So there we go. We applied it. Let's come back in here and knock the stroke weight down. That feels good there. So yeah, we'll do one more here. That's pretty good. 
but I think we need to move it down a little bit, so let's click it to activate it. Let's push it in a little bit. Give it a whoops. Control Z to undo that. Remember, you can always lock that stuff, but I'm, I'm not really worried about it. I know I can target it a little better. So that feels good. Let's grab him, throw him out a little bit more. All right, and I think I need to fatten this guy up. I'm going to do it with a stroke width, so Shift W. Grab this guy, and I'm going to hold Alt on this one just to mess with this side to thicken it. That feels better. So let's move out. Let's deselect by using this tool. Yeah, it feels pretty good. I like that. So I'm going to add a, a shadow on this side of the nose. I'm going to use the pen tool and just create a fill shape. So I'm going to change my appearance. Shift X to swap them. I'm going to head in here. Remember, I'm hiding behind the line art layer, so I don't have to worry so much. Um, I think I'm going to trace out that whole nose. That should help drop it back, give it some kind of perspective. Uh, let's see. No, I don't like that, so um, let's just undo until I get to this last anchor point over here. Oh, wait, not that one, this one here. Yeah, let's undo to there, and then we'll connect here, but bend out and meet, meet this point right here. So let's hit Control. That looks about right. Yeah, I think I like that. All right, now I think I'm going to head back to the single taper, hit my pencil tool, and add some more lines on this cheek here. So let's see. There, there, and one here. Okay, I'm cool with that. Let's try up here on this brow. Cool with that, and maybe let's let's knock a few in here. So I'm gonna swipe back in here. Nope, it's too much of a curve. Ours are a little more simple, so we got to keep consistent with that. That's a little tight. Let's undo that. That feels good. Okay, and let's see with maybe applying some here. Let's throw one in here, here, and then one out here. No, that doesn't feel good. Let me move that back. That's okay. And yeah, remember, this black uh, fill space, it's like the, their gum um, kind of spilling over into the hair. It's on top, so there's going to be a shadow there, and that actually kind of feels good. They're a little small, so let's pull it out just a bit. Target it with the direct select. Move it out. Give it a bend. Okay, that feels pretty good. So now I'm going to do one last thing to kind of unify this stuff. Um, now remember, this the teeth... Um, they're a different weight than this outer one, so we want to bring some harmony to that. So the way I'm going to do that now is I'm going to unlock all three of these layers. I'm going to um, hit Control A to select all. And you can do it by select all in the menu. And then um, I'm going to hit Control C to copy. I'm going to lock all these layers now. Select this one here so that when I create a new one, it creates it on top. So I have a new layer. I'm going to go ahead and Control shift v to paste in place. So now it's grabbed everything that I copied and pasted them in place into this new layer. Um, you can go to Edit, Paste in Place right here, Control shift v So now that I have them all, I'm going to go ahead and Object Expand Appearance, because we had some strokes in there um, that are paths. Let's do it again. Expand. Select all, object, expand, one last time, three times, and I actually have an action that completes this, but I wanted to avoid it for sake of the tutorial. And then I'm going to hit, um, let's see here, we need to unite, because we just want to take it all and make it one big shape. So now it's made one big shape, and you can see that on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead, control shift D, I'm going to turn the transparency back on. Um, so now if you see, I'm going to turn off the layers, so um, turn off the line art, you can see all the highlight and shadow shape. Turn off the highlights to that one big shape. Um, I could, probably could have just duplicated that, um, but I just went, went about it uh, the long way for some, what reason, I don't know. Um, and turn this one off, we have the shadow shape. Actually, the reason why is I don't want to apply a um, stroke to this shape. I want to have a shape itself. So I'm going to turn them all back on, and now I have the that back um, 
darkest tone selected. And now what I'm do, basically going to do is just click this and drag to create a um, stroke onto this one. Let's go to the stroke panel. I'm going to make sure that the appearance is going to apply to the outside of that path by clicking this uh, um, far right align stroke icon. And then I'm going to go ahead and expand this stroke out until it feels right. And sometimes you're going to have to deselect to kind of see what it looks like. So I'm going to do that here. And that's, that's looking pretty good. Maybe a couple more, let's see. That's a little too thick. Let's knock it back down to two. I think four is good. So that'll add some unity to the, the stroke width. And um, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, I like it. So all in all, you're pretty much done. So what I would basically do is target this entire um, layer and then group them all together. Same with this, I would select all the highlights by just clicking to the right of that target. Um, and you can see when I hover it says indicate selected art, click to select art. So it's selecting all the art inside that layer, control G to group. And there's nothing to group here and nothing to group here because they're all just single shape. And then basically I can um, do the target this here by clicking and then hold shift and move to the next one, the next one, the next one, control G. To group and now I have a complete shape. I can remove all these layers if I want. I have an act, a, the editable, uh, editable line art back here. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is the, uh, the tiger head we created. So I will probably end up throwing this onto the Pixel Mosh Pit website um, as a, um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe for a dollar if you guys are interested um, to help support the channel if you want the head. I'll throw it up on Pixel Mosh Pit for a buck. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys took a lot from the tutorial. Um, please comment. Uh, remember to share. Do the likes. Um, feel free to troll me in the comment section. Love that stuff. Um, yeah, and if you guys have any questions or want to see some future uh, tutorial stuff, hit me in the comment box or at pixelmoshpit at gmail.com. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.